I don't know what's going on. I, I maybe have a habit of not pressing play. So I press play. I'll watch later. The second part of my vision, the first part I called the scorpion tail and the angel presenting. This one I don't have a title for, but maybe by the end I will have. It's, hard. it's out of this world, but of this world, the, the thing I saw. I have a drawing of it. You need to maybe pause this afterwards and look at it. It's not great. Okay, so. This is it on side profile. It's like a worm with a mouth. And this is the front. It has a circle, which is the mouth, and this is its body going back in the um, foreground. <clears throat> so after I'd been presented with the scorpion tail by the gallant angel, I saw, I'll just read it. The second part of the vision was of a floating worm-like thing. It was wild. It was white. It was organic. It swam, but not in water, but in the air. It moved like it was a fish with no water or a microorganism in fluid filled environment which you'd see under a microscope now it had a mouth it was like a wee puckman you know mouth it was a it was round head with a wee pucky puckman you know it was fat not slender not like a tapeworm and then I saw what I sensed the Holy Spirit is telling me now is like a mother ship. It hovered like a zeppelin. Yes, it was like a zeppelin. It functioned like a zeppelin. It too was white and organic. It moved like uh, I can't remember the word, the name of these things. <clears throat> They're like, it's not a manta ray, but a mantene, mantene, mantene. I'll describe it and you'll know what I'm talking about. The, it's those strange sea lion looking hippo things that you see in fresh water. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's how it moved. It was different in texture from the worm, but it was in the air. Its surface was like, and then this is another word that I can't say, I can't remember what they are, but they're what a, what a lotto? A, 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 a lotto? The Mexican working fish, uh, walking fish, <laughs> yeah, oxal oxalotto, oxa, yeah. I've never had. I hate them. Anyway, its skin was like that. You could, I think, you could transparently see through it. It was gross, but it didn't have any protrusions. You know, the gills and none, nothing was coming out of it. So another way I can describe it is that it was, it was like a. Like those water balloons, the toys you can get. Now they're filled with water, but the balloon is an actual tube. So it runs inside itself. The this sort of toy is the sort of toy that that you can hold when you hold it, it slips out of your hands. And when you grab it and you try and hold it. Then the water shifts and it rolls out of your hands, you know, sort of it's a toy like this and it drops and you pick it up. <clears throat> so 
So out of the end of this creature that I saw, it has like the the face of it, even though there was no face. It was, it was, I suppose, just thinking now, it's like the balloon I mentioned. It did have like a puckered front, like there was a way into it. Out of that came a mist or, or a smoke. And it wasn't necessarily black, it was just a grey colour. But I clearly knew that it was like spores, like spores puffing out. Like the way that a puff mushroom implodes and sends out spores all over the place and into the atmosphere. So this vision is like something David Attenborough would commentate. I'm not as good as him. <laughs> and he'd do it with such fascination. Only it was not of this world. But it was out of this world. And, and this reminds me very much of the revelation that John had. God, please tell me it's John who wrote Revelations. When he described what he saw, it's out of this world. You know, like you might be thinking, what the? This is what the Lord has shown me. And Jonathan Clegg has helped me to realize just how literal what John saw in Revelations is. We are going to see some freaky shit. I'm telling you now, you know how in plain sight, the powers on this earth know what these things look like. And we see it in the movies, and the Lord this is he has helped me write this and this is what he says now it's like war of the worlds but you know war of the worlds isn't right because it's not mechanical but it's like the way they came and it's like alien and that's when I when he, when he told me to write that that's when I went oh yeah because there's those worm things that come out of their chest so it's like those two movie, movies all rolled up into one. I was not afraid when I saw it. But it was dangerous and it was coming on the earth. So <coughs> what I'm trying to say, <coughs> I think I, one of the words that I've heard on the three days of darkness is, and it harks back, it's like, the enemy is going to come as our worst nightmare. You know, I used to watch horror movies. And the only horror movies that I've watched as a Christian are the ones that I felt the Lord lead me to. So this is why you cannot be mean or religious over these things. You know, like Paul said that what is permissible for one is not permissible for another. Well, I'm not saying everyone watch horror movies because we, we we don't participate in some things so as not to have other people stumble. But we what overrides all of that is what the Lord asks you to do. Don't go watching Bird Box. The Lord asks me to watch it. You know, I watch a lot of horrors and I did goosebumps before I was saved when I was a child. And that was one of the things when I got saved I wasn't allowed to do anymore. There's some stupid things he asks you to give up and they're personal to you. Just to make it, to, to so you can understand this point. When I first got saved, I looked in the mirror and the Lord spoke to me. And I always had very, very um, low self-esteem. My mother could never... Um, work out why she couldn't get me to believe the things she said to me, the lovely things she tried to say to me sometimes. I can't lift 
your self-esteem, she said. Only the Lord God could do that. And when I looked in the mirror, I thought, as I always did, I'm ugly. And the Lord said to me, he rebuked me. He said, you don't ever say that again. That will ne You'll never say that again. And I never have. It was gone. And then he also told me not to wear eyeliner. I used to wear eyeliner under my eyes. So, and I was addicted to eyeliner from the age of maybe 13. I would not leave the house without it. And I got saved when I was 26. And I instantly gave it up. Now you guys will think that's funny. But I instantly gave it up. It's like maybe someone who gels their hair a certain way. There's nothing wrong with doing your hair. With fuke, fuck or whatever, excuse me, you call it. My God, it's got it. But eyeliner, there's nothing wrong with eyeliner. I wear eyeliner now. But that was an, an obedience to the Lord. So don't take what the Lord says and think it's for everyone. It's for you. It's your way. It's your way of laying down your idols and overcoming the enemy and get that armor on. You've got the armor on then. Like where he shined my armor was no one can ever call me ugly. He created me. He said, I made you perfect the way you are. Okay. Anyway, I went off track. But, um, yeah. I got there because I said, your worst nightmare. Um, but it won't be our worst nightmare. But, but just, <clears throat> we will have so much compassion for those that are suffering through it. And that, that we will be moved by compassion like Jesus did. And this is when we will, we will do the miracles and we will, we will, we will manifest the power of God, the glory of God. Of this love and compassion. We've all been there. Remember your testimony. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Remember your testimony. <laughs>